live on view, uh, YouTube. It'll be seen tomorrow on channel 16. Suzanne, roll call, please. Commissioner Bosco. Here. Commissioner Sakala. Here. Commissioner Hemler. Here. Commissioner Kiner. Here. Chairman Ludwig. Here. Commissioner Mancini. Here. Commissioner Muller. Here. Commissioner Riley. Here. Commissioner Sferraza. Here. Vice Chairman Suzak. Here. Commissioner Ungeyer. Here. 11 commissioners are present and are absent. And we are here, uh, number two, discussion resolution setting the sewer use charge rate for 2020-21 billing sewer fee and rates. Uh, again, two comments were attached, you know, um, that were provided for the virtual public hearing. Uh, again, it was put, put, the, put, the legal notice was put in the paper and I'll read the resolution. Whereas in accordance with chapter 103, section 7-2, 255 of the Connecticut General Statute, Statutes, the Enfield Water Pollution Control Authority held a virtual public hearing on June 15, 2020 at 5 p.m. and accepted written comments on a proposed 2020 and 2021 sewer service fee schedule. Now, therefore, be resolved, the Enfield, the Enfield Sewer Authority does hereby adopt the sewer service fee schedule attached hereto as attachment A, prepared by the town manager's office on June 9, 2020. So moved. By Councilor, Second. Councilor Man, Commissioner Mangini. Second by Commissioner Muller. You know, Chris, I mean, I, I don't know if we remind folks that we basically accepted a, a $9 uh, fee increase. Yes, basically what we had put up and we had the link so that persons yep. wanting to comment on the public hearing were able to do so. And just a quick review, uh, the proposed in the manager's budget was the quarterly fee to stay at $30 per quarter. And for the... Um, Usage fee to remain at 349 and 524, the volumetric respectively. However, we did give two alternatives to the council to even out the increase um, in FY22, uh, because as we've laid out in the budget, that there will be uh, increased operating costs because the Clean Water Fund loan will be due. That'll increase by a million six the cost of water pollution control. The bonding uh, will also come due of $300,000. We have a $250,000 repayment to the general fund and the anticipated operator positions when the plant is completed this fall of 220,000 approximately. So we would have had a shortfall. Council prudently went with the option um, to uh, accept basically um, what the Novak report was recommending, which would be a $39 per quarter increase in FY 2021 and, a, and then an equal increase in FY 2022. So basically the bottom line is that would be a $42 increase per household next year and $42 approximately the year after instead of having it all occur in one year at $83. And I'll just remind you that, you know, the total cost of the upgrade, which should be complete in October was $36 million. So we'll have a, a very state-of-the-art facility and uh, we want to be able to maintain it and to properly service it and have appropriate personnel to do so. So the council's prudent action to uh, accept this increase over two years, um, I think is uh, very advisable. Thank you, sir. And again, we've been in, in being consistent through these virtual meetings. Now we'll go, we'll move left all the way to right. So Commissioner Kiner, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, I, um, I don't doubt that an increase in revenue is needed. Um, the town manager very eloquently stated those reasons based upon the costs uh, in running the WPC. But I will be voting against this measure. What I am voting against is a question that I cannot get answered. Why are these costs out of control? I understand the costs. I understand that we need revenue to pay for these costs, but these costs, as I've said, are running out of control. And until we get a handle on that, my vote is gonna be no on this. And let me just say one more thing, parenthetically, I still believe that having a separate nonpartisan board comprised of residents, town council members, experts in water pollution 
who can monitor the WPC and still allow the town council final jurisdiction in setting rates might not really be that bad an idea. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, normally, and I, I respect every councilor's um, yeah. comments and they are entitled to it, but I would just like to say that, you know, I would have to just respectfully disagree to, to the characterization that the costs are quote out of, out of, out of control. Um, we're, we're totally transparent in the budget. Unfortunately, this uh, water pollution control was never properly funded. We were under the DEP mandatory uh, orders uh, facing millions of dollars a year in fines. If we didn't do the upgrades town very prudently, we got uh, a clean water fund at a uh, loan at uh, 2% of 23 million. We got a grant, which we don't have to pay back of 5.6 million. Uh, because of the Department of Corrections agreement, we were able to get uh, $2,500,000 towards the upgrade. And we also bonded at a very reasonable rate of 4.6%. So the sins of the past, I guess, we have to some degree inherited. We do have to pay back the general fund of the $250,000 because each year, uh, the town failed to properly and adequately fund this plant. So I welcome a, a, a very hearty and we can have a robust, um, hopefully when we're all together in August, uh, a water pollution control meeting to review Woodard and Kern. We can bring them in, uh, the plant operators, and we can discuss uh, the cost of running this. But water pollution control plants are expensive to run in the budget. And in the past, we have provided the comparisons with other communities. We're right in the middle. Uh, and while many of the, those lag behind and have not invested the CIP and the money for an infrastructure, which is certainly going to curtail and restrict their ability for economic development, Enfield, once again, has been looking forward, has been progressive and visionary. We're going to have a great plant. And I just wanted to be able to state for the record, I think it's very run well by the personnel there. And of course, over the years, the town just didn't properly fund it. And therefore, we have to catch up. But we can look at it and hopefully next year. Um, we'll have a much better idea when all of the costs actually come in and we're running the new plant to be able to review it. And hopefully at some point I concur with Mr. Kind that we'll be able to level off. Um, but I, I think that it is very well run. I think the council does a good job. I think all of the hard work has been done. And I would just reiterate too, for the record, I don't think it's necessary. I think all of you possess the requisite ability and financial acumen as you do with the town budget, which obviously is, is much larger to be able to monitor it and shepherd it going forward. So I just wanted to state that at the beginning. Thank you well, for your thank indulgence. You for that, Mr. Town Manager. Obviously we have a, a disagreement there, but I do appreciate your setting up that meeting. I would more than welcome a uh, meeting with anybody from WCC. Thank you. Councilor Sakala. I mean, excuse me, Commissioner Kassala. Kassala. Sakala, I'm oh, sorry. Hmm. Yeah. All right. That's teams. okay. Um, so I'm going to be supporting this. Um, I'd like to outright say that I nobody wants to raise this. They they really don't. Um, we were presented with a couple of options: not making any increase this year, making a you know we're going to say a fifty percent increase or a full you know the increase for two years. The reason I'm going to support this one as a partial increase is because I believe that if we don't do an increase this year and wait until next year to do the full increase. I don't think what we have anticipated to be enough for of an increase next year is going to be enough. And we would end up having it to be more than the anticipated, um, I think, $18 total that we're anticipating over two years. So I think that the lesser of all evils is to do half this year. And hopefully that'll be enough to get us just to another $9, um, you know, plus the other um, increases. So I don't like it, um, but as the town manager says, and I think I've been saying for quite some time, this council didn't properly fund this um, water pollution control fund for quite some time. I don't know if we just didn't listen to the consultants or if the consultants didn't give us good enough information. I, I think it maybe, who knows, maybe it's a little of both. But I remember us being told more than once that we were not going to have enough revenue to properly run this plan. And here we are. So I don't know that we have a choice. I don't know how to get around it. Um, so I honestly think this might be the lesser of all evils. So I will support it. Thank you. Thank you. And I would just, I think it's, I, I just oh, add sorry, to, ahead, um, uh, I, and I thank 
uh, Commissioner Sakala for her comments. And she's absolutely correct. If you look at our budget presentation, we had a complete slide showing if you had left um, current operating costs uh, from last year and not done the increase, we would have generated 6.9 million approximately. And we would have had a shortfall when all of the um, bonding and clean fund comes due. We would have had a shortfall of $1.2 million if you hadn't um, taken this increase. It'll get us much closer to that number. So it, it just is a reality. And I, again, I echo um, many of us weren't here in the way it was done before. It just wasn't properly. It just wasn't properly funded. Thank you. Commissioner Mangini. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go back to ancient history and Chris, maybe you can help me with this, but we had been promised from the state of Connecticut for the prison contribution monies. Are we collecting all that we are due from the state? Yes, under their agreement, um, under the ratio that was in the agreement, they had an obligation to pay us just over $2.4 million. And due to the assistance of our state legislators, um, they they lobbied them. It was put into the bonding. It was one of the last bonding um, before the pandemic. And we did receive our check. Okay, thank you. Because I know years ago, we um, did have to fight uh, to get our due. So I'm happy to hear that now we are getting what we are supposed to get from the state. Um, and uh, along the lines of what uh, Councilman Sakala um, stated earlier, I have to agree um, doing a partial increase over a couple of year period versus hitting people uh, head on next year, I think is wise. Because quite honestly, I think next year is going to be a more bitter pill to swallow than this year. So again, you know, nobody wants any kind of an increase, but we have to do it. You know, it's better to do it this way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I will, you are correct, uh, uh, um, Commissioner, that several years back when I was town attorney, we had to almost uh, bring litigation against the Department of Corrections right. because pursuant to their memo of understanding, there's an overflow agreement and that was negotiated. They did pay us millions of dollars. Uh, and it was rewritten. Uh, this is separate. This under the agreement also said for upgrades, depending on their percentage and flow. Uh, and it happened to be $2.5 million. And I think we're just fortunate we got it before the pandemic and before, you know, the state is going to be in the dire situation it is going forward. We're lucky we got in under the wire. Thank you. Commissioner Riley. Um, well, I'm definitely all good for it being split into parts. You know, it's, Horrible that we have to make an increase on something because I really don't want to, but we have to because I like to flush my toilet and <laughs> not have to worry about what happens afterwards. So um, we there's no choice. So the best choice is to split it up. That's the way that I see it. And maybe we can review things once, you know, everything gets up and running over there and maybe we can, you know, Sh shoulder the load with another town and help them out and maybe maybe the fees can go down who knows i'm not sure but only time will tell thank you commissioner Sparazza. i'll say that mayor no question uh, Dep uh commissioner uh suzak <clears throat> i will support this but i like we've heard, I think we need to really have a financial analysis of the water pollution control. I constantly hear that we don't know who's, who's connected and are people connected properly. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. But on the history of this, I think that it may behoove us to go back to day one and set, when we set the rates and we said that we would have no rate increase for five years. So the first five years we were set at a rate and not the rate that was advised by our advisors, but a rate that um, the council felt through different changes would be more palatable to the people of Enfield. And we still, we, we were in a hole and we dug the hole a little bit deeper those five years. So we're digging out of a hole and I think we all have to understand that. We have to understand the difference between you know, the recommendations from Woodard and Kern and the NOVAC report recommendations and try as a commission to integrate this so we understand 
how we're going to move forward with this. So I agree with everybody in August. And also, Bill, I have to agree with you. I think that the Water Pollution Control Subcommittee needs to maybe expand to have a couple of citizen members. And I think with that and the power of setting rates staying in the council, we may have a better voice as to what's going on. So thank you for a lot letting me express my concerns. Commissioner Muller. No questions, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Ungar. Um, I don't have any questions, but I agree with what Donna said. And I also don't want to see the rates going up, but it is what it is for right now. And um, I'd like further detail from the, that committee. That would be uh, interesting. So I'm all set. Thank you. Commissioner Hemler. Um, I'm in agreement with everybody. I don't want to see a tax increase either, but um, Donna, I agree we should do a financial analysis. I'd be very interested to dig into that. Um, it sounds like uh, we've been kicking the can down the road. We can't keep doing that, so splitting it up is the is a logical thing to do. Thank you. Commissioner Bosco. Yes, um, I'm going to sound like a hypocrite right now because I, I will not be supporting this uh, thing. I, I, there's a few things I don't like about it, but you know everyone's got to realize that stuff costs money and i i do think that it was the better way of doing it in two instead of one big jump uh but with that being also said you know people got to realize you know we had some letters where people were mad at us but we pay the same fees so you know not one of us want to pay more than we should have to and uh really that's where it's at you know we're going to be paying the same fees that all the res other residents in town are paying, and no one wants to make a tax increase on their self, especially if they could uh, help it. So uh, it's it's probably just, but I will not be supporting it. Thank you. Uh, Chris, you know, two things. In you know, we did do a presentation about a year ago, a very detailed presentation from the beginning of when we had to sit, you know, change over from taking that out of the tax bill and make it a your sewer fee that's out there on your website, I, I presume. Yes. You know, that went into a lot of the details that you know folks <laughs> seem to be talking about that we've sort of reviewed. And I think the other thing too, we made a decision, I think, you know, three years ago or four years ago that we weren't going to kick the can down the road, that we actually were addressing this, you know, uh, issue. And, and when it comes to the 2.5 million, I think you're being modest. I think the council and the administration for almost two years argued to get that money. It didn't happen. It took us, you know, uh, we were, uh, we didn't, we didn't sue, but we certainly contemplated it, you know, until again, our state rep stepped in and helped us. So again, it wasn't like that was an easy, easy get, so to speak. No, I think you're correct, Mike. I think probably in the last three, four months with COVID, everything else seems that it was a lot easier and it seems a right. long time ago, but you're right. And I will just state that, uh, we are, you know, what these water pollution control employees have done down there, you don't really understand unless you've been driving by to see the upheaval, to see the pandemonium of the construction right. of basically tearing down and rebuilding it while keeping the service and all of the processing and treatment going on. It has been a Herculean effort. And I know we like to thank all of our other essential personnel from EMS and uh, our police, but please, if you get a chance to give a shout out to those at water pollution control, they, they've done a marvelous job. And I will just say, that we were very fortunate to get a superintendent uh, with us. He, he got us through a lion's share of this. He's going to be retiring. Um, and we've been able to hire a, a, a very capable gung-ho uh, individual who will be starting early in June to take over the reins. And I'm looking to his expertise to help us to make recommendations in the future. Because I have to let you all know, you know, this is obviously a critical uh, service, but this didn't even with the bonding and the upgrade address all of the pump stations, my friends, right. we have millions and millions of dollars of upgrades in pump stations. You've got pipes, you've got a, 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 a task in front of us that is bigger than just the upgrade for water pollution control. So right. I, I endorse and, and embrace what Mr. Kiner has said and Donna, we're going to need a very vibrant subcommittee and the council paying attention. And I, I, I give you my word that my full attention is on this and 
the Novak report calls for other individuals to make sure we maintain it and that we can run it properly. But we're not out of the woods on this. And I hopefully the level off in October will have the ribbon cutting and we'll have a new facility. And I will just tell you, though, it is going to pay dividends because, as you know, we're in the works with some major companies that are coming into town. And because we have the capacity to be able to hook them up to water pollution control, right. we will realize millions, millions, not hundreds of thousands, but millions of dollars in additional taxes to help us with these projects. So the future is bright and we will look at it. And I, I look forward to the back and forth. Right. I'm glad Mr. Kiner is, is, is involved and sincere about this. He'll be an asset. And I know Donna is, and we'll get a couple of citizens on there that have some knowledge. And like all the other uh, problems that we, we confront, we'll tackle them and, and we'll, sure. we'll move forward. And Chris, the key thing is capacity. That's what people got to understand. Having that capacity yes. is huge. Or other communities in our own state are facing some very serious issues where the cost is going to be very prohibitive over the next five to six years. Having that capacity is going to be huge. And I know we don't we don't think of cost avoidance and those type things, but that's really what we're trying to do here. I mean, and I think that's you know, and the other point too, you remember we also, you know, some of the pump stations that still need to work, but we also have done a nice job to those folks of making sure. Because then Enfield lives on a water table where, again, we do try to flush those lines. So we minimize, and I know folks who've gotten the water in their basement would certainly disagree, but we do keep that up as an ongoing service as well, where it's very important, where it could be worse. And I know if you've had water, you, you don't have any sympathy. So, I mean, I think there's a number of different things going on. No, I but concur, again, Mike. Yeah. This council always takes yep. and looks at the hard tasks and makes the tough decisions, whether it's the infrastructure with the commitment that the council has, particularly Councillor Susack, to the road referendums we're going to look at. We hired a deputy director of public works just to do an inventory of all town buildings, all CIP. We're looking at those. Our commitment, you know, to a new high school, to the JFK, yep. um, you know, we're going to address the transfer station. We don't shirk our responsibility. Uh, everybody does the hard work and we get yep. results and they will pay future dividends. And many communities, unfortunately, are neglecting their infrastructure and they're going to pay a heavy price for that. Yeah, going I agree. And Enfield is not one of them. Yeah, I agree. Well said. Seeing no other hands raised. Um, Suzanne, roll call, please. Commissioner Bosco. Against. Commissioner Sakala. For. Commissioner Hemmler. For. Commissioner Kiner. Against. Chairman Ludwig. For. Commissioner Mancini. For. Commissioner Muller. For. Commissioner Riley. For. Commissioner Sparazzo. For. Vice Chairman Susak. For. Commissioner Ongar. Four. There's nine in favor, two against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. A motion to, to adjourn the Water Pollution Control Authority meeting. Motion to adjourn. By Commissioner Mangini. Second. By Commissioner Ongar. All those in favor say aye. 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 Most meetings canceled. We move right over. Meeting adjourned, excuse me. We move right over to the virtual special meeting on Monday, June 15th. Uh, again, of 2020, again, will be live on YouTube and will be available tomorrow on Channel 16. Again, Suzanne, to the regular virtual meeting. Roll call, please. Councillor Fosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Hemmler. Here. Councillor Kiner. Here. Chairman Ludwig. Here. Councillor Mancini. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. Councillor Riley. Here. Councillor Sarazzo. Here. Vice Chairman Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungar. Here. There's 11 members present, none are absent. Thank you, Suzanne. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. By Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Ungar. We are now in exec session.
now out of executive session. We're all, we're all set ETV. Keep moving on to item three, the consent agenda review, consent, consent gender agenda review, excuse me. Uh, item A, re request the transfer of funds for the Family Resource Center of $1,530. And item B, transfer of funds for Youth Services Amplify grant of $2,780. You know, unless anyone has any questions, you know, Suzanne, I think I could just take a, just say, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? On a consent agenda, Suzanne, it's 11 in favor, zero against. Thank you. Yeah. Moving right on to item four, the resolution to appoint firm to audit fiscal year 2019-2020. Financial statements. Sorry, one second. Whereas... Chapter three, section 11 of the town charter states the council shall annually designate an independent public audit, okay, independent public accountant or firm to audit the books and accounts <clears> of <throat> the town. Whereas the director of finance solicit and review bids for such services and therefore recommends the appointment of the audit firm Bloom Shapiro and company to audit the town's accounts for fiscal year, fiscal year end of 2019. And for the subsequent fiscal years ending 2020 and 21, in accordance with the following fee schedule, year one, $66,500, year two, $68,150, year three, $69,825. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council does hereby designate, designate the audit firm Bloom, Shapiro, and Company to audit the town's accounts for the fiscal year ending 20, June 30, 2020, in accordance with the above recommendation, and for the subsequent fiscal years as stated above, subject to the annual designation by the town council, submitted on June 8, 2020, by the finance, by John Wolf, our finance director. So moved. So moved. By Councillor Muller. Second. Seconded by Councillor Mangini. So, uh, John, I know you're on. I don't know if there's anything, or Chris, you'd like to just add? Yeah, uh, John's available for questions, but basically uh, this is pursuant to the charter that we appoint a an a independent audit accountant every year to audit the books. Uh, we went out to an RFP in April of 2019. Uh, Blum, Shapiro, and company was the winning bidder. They performed the FY19 audit, uh, and this is to um, allow them to go forward. And um, this will be the first of three years as set forth in the resolution that you read. Got it. So John, I know you're on. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, no, I, I think um, if you remember, we went out to bid a little earlier. We weren't satisfied with the uh, previous audit firm. And um, I think we've, we've always gotten good, good uh, service from Bloom Shapiro in the past. And I think uh, we're pretty happy with the results. Um, so, I mean, if there's any questions anybody has, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Okay, sir, moving again left to right, Councillor Kiner. No questions. Councillor Sakala. No questions, thank you. Councillor Mangini. Yes, I do have one question. The, um, the rate goes up each year, and I know it went out to bid. Is that what the bid amount asked for on this particular company? Um, the when they submitted their proposal, though that's those were the amounts that they that they proposed, and they were the winning bidders. So that those are the ones that we selected. Actually, I think they were the only bidders. It's tough to find people that understand uh, municipal accounting um, anymore in in Connecticut. Um, the, the last year. The last time we went out to bid, Bloom was not able to bid, and we ended up with a firm from um, from Maine. Are you comfortable with paying these amounts each year? That is, they are um, in the. That that's about what we were paying them for the three years prior when we had them previously. Yes. Hey, there, there was not a substantial increase. Okay, thank you. Councilor Riley. Um, I'm all set, thank you. Councilor Spraza. No questions, Mayor. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set, thank you. Councilor Muller. No questions, thank you. Councilor Ungar. 
No questions, thank you. Councilor Hamler. No questions, thank you. Councilor Bosco. All set. John, just one quick question. I mean, I know would, um, is, at some point, maybe was it in the fall, will we get an annual report of the audit? Um, usually the, the uh, comprehensive annual financial report has to be submitted by December 31st to the state. Okay. Um, so usually we hand them out in around February, but this year kind of things blew up a little bit. And um, in one of the uh, virtual meetings, I think we submitted, we, we handed out the financial reports and the audit reports to everybody. Okay, got it. Okay, yep. Thank you. Yep. Seeing no other questions, roll call, please, Suzanne. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Councilor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mancini. I missed that. Councilor Mancini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungar. Four. There's 11 in favor and against no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item five. Resolution canceling, canceling select regular meetings in July and August of 2020. Resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby cancel the regular meetings of the council scheduled for July 20, 2020. And August 17, 2020, submitted by the town mayor's office on June 4, 2020. So moved by Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Mangini. Uh, pretty straight, pretty straightforward, Chris. I don't think there's much to say in this one. No, I think this has been the custom for the last 30 years, at least as long as I've been here. Uh, moving left to right, Councillor Kiner, any questions? No questions, thank you. Councillor Sakala. So I don't have a question on this, but I have a related question that I want to ask now because there really hasn't been much area in these agendas for counselor communications. Um, do we know when we're getting back to actual chambers? And my second question is, if that's not going to be in the first meeting in July, I want to know what we're going to do um, about getting public comment. It's been a couple of months. Um, I know in the beginning it was difficult because just logistically, but we've had a couple of months to figure it out and I'm not quite sure why we don't have it. Well, I'm not prepared to answer that. Uh, it's not, not really this uh, agenda item. We can refer to the town attorney and see what others are doing. The governor hasn't re raised the restrictions on indoor above 10. So it really right. is very difficult. I wouldn't imagine uh, in July we will be back in council chambers. I think probably I the first, yeah, the first possibility probably would be in August. But I, okay. I agree and concur that it would be nice to be able to have public input more than the manner prescribed for public hearings where you post something and people put public comment yeah. and that we share. But we can, we can ask the town attorney, hopefully, uh, Councilor, by August, we should be maybe back in business. We'll be back to normal with a normal agenda and being in council chambers, I think we would all welcome that. And um, if it's not, then we will ask the town attorney to, to have an opinion as to how we could have uh, public input and more uh, communication other than in the special meeting um, format. Right, I mean, I understand that you probably weren't prepared to answer that. It's just, it's, it's something that we're not getting a lot of time to talk about. And I do, I think that, you know, the IT department should be able to figure out something in order to get us uh, some sort of number people can, uh, I don't know how it works if it's above my pay grade, but we need to figure it out. Thanks. Oh, okay, we can look at, I will just tell you that these meetings, I think primarily the viewership has been pretty low. I think people at this juncture are very concerned with their lives and getting back to normal. That doesn't mean that they don't watch the meetings after, but I think we've had three or four people uh, participate. You can see from the public hearing input, it's very minimal. Uh, I think a lot of folks are anxious to get out there and Let's play ball, but we'll we'll look at this. I think it's it's imperative that we have input, and I hope in August we can get back to our, for uh, you know to our normal. Thank you, Councilor Mangini. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Riley. All set. Councilor Spraza. All set, Mayor. 
Deputy Mayor Suzak. Um, actually, I want to comment on Gina. Gina, that's something that, you know, we passed the policy and procedures. I said there's work for us to do. And there is work for us to do. I mean, I think we need to go back and, you know, we have emergency procedures that we um, had in place, but I don't think any of us foresaw anything that would be this long in its, you know, entirety where we would you know, be months and months where we would not be meeting as a regular council. I think it's um, fortunate that we're all able to meet as a regular council electronically, but this is something that we could sit and, you know, mill over and talk with the town attorney on how do we do this so that, that we can move forward and technology is going to keep changing and, you know, things will, will transpire, but I will, will support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Muller. No questions, thank you. Councilor Ongar. All set, thanks. Councilor Hamler. No questions, thank you. Councilor Bosco. All set. Make sure no other, I see no other questions. Suzanne, roll call, please. Councilor Bosco. Councilor Bosco. I feel like she's going to Four. tied. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mancini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ongeyer. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item six, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a memorandum of agreement with the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services. Uh, whereas Krog receives federal grant money from the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection. Whereas this grant provides funding for six regional set aside projects, regional collaboration, Connecticut Intelligence Center, Metro Medical Response Team, Citizens Corp, also known as CERT, and medical preparation response. Resolved that town manager Christopher W. Bronson is authorized to sign the above reference memorandum of agreement with the State of Connecticut Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection, the Capital Regional Council of Governments, and the Region 3 Emergency Management Planning Team, uh, Regional Emergency Planning Team, and to affix the corporate seal and a name and on behalf of the town of Enfield, subject to review and approval by the town attorney, submitted by Steve Hall on June 8th, our Director of Emergency Management. So moved. Second. By Councilor Muller. Second, Second by Councilor Riley. Yeah, Chris, I think uh, straightforward is just to re up our, our current emergency management agreement. Yes, thank you, Mayor. It's for the enumerated uh, purposes, and certainly, I think in the last few months, it's never been used more and more effectively. And we thank Steve Hall, our emergency management director, for all of his hard work in helping to coordinate, especially with uh, reimbursement to FEMA for our expenditures and also for obtaining the PPE to our local region, which has been uh, enormously helpful to our first responders. Thank you, sir. Again, moving left to right, Councillor Kiner. No questions. Councillor Sakala. No questions. Councillor Mangini. I just wanted to say thank you, Steve. You've done a phenomenal job and it's much appreciated. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Um, I'm all set. Councillor Sferraza. All set. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set, thank you. Councilor Muller. All set, thank you. Councilor Ungar. No questions, thank you. Councilor Hemler. Um, I just wanna say thank you to Steve. Uh, I know he does a great job. So I used to be on the CERT team and um, it, it, you, you do, a, do a phenomenal job, thank you. Councilor Bosco. All set. Make sure I see no other questions. Suzanne, roll call please. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Councilor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sferraza. 
Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's 11 in favor and against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item seven, a resolution authorizing the town manager to sign grant application and enter an agreement with the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Whereas the Connecticut Department of Transportation, also known as DOT, provides several grants to the Department of Social Services annually. Whereas the Department of Social Services is in the process of preparing the fiscal year 21 grant applications to the DOT for funds that will be available to the town of Enfield for capital, administrative, and operation costs. Resolved that town manager Christopher W. Bronson is authorized to sign and submit the grant applications and enter into an agreement with the seat of Connecticut DOT upon reward, subject to review and approval by the town attorney. In the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with the DOT and affix the corporate seal, submitted on June 7, 2020 by Cindy Guerrero, the Director of Social Services. So moved. By Councilor Muller. Second. By Councilor uh, Deputy Mayor Suzak. Uh, Chris, I, uh, again, this is for the dial ride and other uh, various cramps you know, we have in town. Imagine. Yeah, Mike, I, I, you know, you know, some of these things we do every year, we take them for granted. It becomes yeah. rather mundane. We currently have nine vehicles in the fleet. Four have over 100,000 miles. If awarded, this will replace two of those vehicles with the highest maintenance and repair costs. But I would just like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the extraordinary job our social services people do across the town from infants to seniors. We are second to none in the state of Connecticut in what we offer. And I just want to thank at this juncture, the extraordinary courage again of those drivers from Magic Bus and for the dial a ride who when everybody else is, you know, all, you know, the anxiety and trepidation, people wanting to stay home and quarantine. These individuals were out there in those buses, maintaining the routes throughout this time period, even at the highest rate of infection, bringing people who are at most risk to needed appointments and to shopping, they are heroes. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank them. Sometimes we approve these grants, we don't think about it, but these are individuals who did extraordinary work. Essential does not even begin to, to uh, understand and to estimate the extraordinary service they provided our people. They never stopped and they all came in and I just like to thank them for that. Yeah, Well, well said, Chris. Is, um, is Cindy on? I am. Cindy, just want to make sure since you're here, if you have any comments or, or any comments you'd like to make. Um, uh, I would do want to thank the town manager for his kind words because they have stepped up. Um, and again, this is the annual reapplication. Um, it, it serves both purposes for the dial ride and the magic carpet. The state provides 80% um, of the dial ride monies. The other 20% would come from the Senior Citizen Bus Committee Fund. Uh, magic carpet is 100% reimbursed by the state. So it's a win-win for the residents in the town. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. Again, moving left to right, Councillor Kiner. No questions. Councillor Stakala. No questions. I just echo what Chris has said. Kudos to um, kudos to them. They did a great job. And thank you, Councillor Mangina. Yeah, again, thank you so much for all the hard work and dedication. Council Riley. No questions. Keep up the awesome job. Council Sraza. No questions. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set. Thank you. Councilor Muller. No questions. Thank you. Councilor Ungar. <clears throat> no questions, but thank you to social services for the great job. Councilor Hemler. Um, I've always been in support of the bus. A lot of people in my district, if they don't have uh, transportation, this is how they get to work. This is how they get to shop. So um, I appreciate the fact that the bus is kept running through the whole uh, emergency. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Bosco. I'm all set. Chris, you must have saw my cliff notes. You stole my, you stole my uh, what I was gonna say, but I agree, uh, fantastic job by our drivers. You're right, we never stop providing service, a very needed service. And um, again, it just goes to show that uh, yeah, we do, there is folks just some, sometimes just simply doing your job. You're, you're one of the most courageous people out there. And just a question, Chris, the 36,000 rides, is that for all buses or is that just, I mean, is that all combined? I'd have to defer to um, Cindy. Yeah, those are combined rides between Dial Ride and Magic Carpet. And, and city, I don't know. On average, over the last three years, is that about what we've been we've been providing? 
Um, I honestly don't know the answer to that, but I can find out. Um, I do know that we're on our way back up with ridership since we hit the peak of the pandemic. So we're moving back up, um, I, but I could find out previous years. Yeah, if you don't mind, I, 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 sure. it, seems, I mean, it seems like a pretty good number. I, I, yeah. I hear from people, oh, you know, I, I don't see people using it, but that seems to indicate otherwise. Yeah, I will find out. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, Suzanne, roll call, please. Councilor Bosco. Present. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Councilor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Is 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item eight, resolution authorizing the town manager to apply for a grant and enter an agreement with Amplify Inc. for fiscal year 2020, 2021. Whereas Amplify Inc. provides funding to the Youth Services Division, whereas Youth Services in the process of submitting a grant application to Amplify Inc. for funds that will be available to the town in fiscal year 2020 through 2021. Resolved that the town manager, Christopher W. Bromson, is authorized to sign, submit, and grant the application and enter an agreement if rewarded, subject to review and approval by the town attorney, and a name on behalf of the town of Enfield with Amplify Inc. into a fixed corporate seal, submitted on June 5th, 2020 by Cindy Guerrero, our Director of Social Services. So, so most by Councilor Mangini, second by Councilor Muller. And Chris, uh, I don't know. No, again, uh, Mayor, yeah. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Jean Hoy from Youth Services and her folks and Cindy. We have such a marvelous team in place. And Kasha Persiello has been reviewing social services because there is so much that we offer. We do more than most any other community. And this is a program which I think exemplifies that. I remember about a year and a half ago, um, we have a group of, you know, in the area towns that come together uh, to combat drugs. And Gene Hoy put on a presentation that was two Yale doctors on vaping who warned of the dangers. We were, again, a year and a half ahead of the federal government and the states looking at this and realizing the danger. It was before all of the deaths befell us, but they predicted it. And again, it's, it's part of an extraordinary series. We've had FBI agents come in to talk to us about other, you know, drugs and, and, and the uh, addictions of opioids. But again, my hat's off to them that they do this work day in and day out, year after year, and they offer our citizens, I think, better help and services than any other community in the state. And I, I think during these times when we see, um, you know, stresses and, and, and other systemic problems that occur, Enfield has always committed and invested in its youth, as I said before, as well as all the way up to our seniors to make sure people have a, a healthy and a full life in our town. And this is just another uh, program that, that exemplifies that. And I commend it and wanted to get, you know, just take the opportunity to let the council know again, what wonderful people we have working and the, the incredible job that they do for, for all of us. Thank you. Again, Cindy, uh, any comments you'd like to make? Just echo the comments and couldn't be more proud of our team and they're staying on top of and ahead of the curve on things that seriously can impact our youth. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Chris. Again, left to right, Councillor Kiner. No questions. Councillor Sakala. No questions. Councillor Mangini. I'm good, thank you. Councillor Riley. All set, thanks. Councillor Sferraza. No questions. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Muller. All set, thank you. Councillor Ungar. No questions, thank you. Councillor Hemler. Um, Cindy, thank you for your hard work and uh, no questions. Councillor Bosco. All set. Cindy, I, sorry, two quick questions. I don't know if you can answer. When was, was, was there a date where vaping was made legal? Oh, I honestly don't know the answer to that either. So just just curious as we continue to see these things where things are legal, you, ha you know, you have a few stores in town and then, you know, and then we, of course, we find out later that how, again, what folks would know before all this, that it was pretty dangerous to begin with. It's just again, Mike, I, you know, I'll just tell you, I think it was a case where they, they never made it illegal. Even there was much vaunted in the federal government to try to 
you know, roll right. back some of it. And they really didn't. It was a lot of um, fanfare. But one of the biggest takeaways, and I'll never forget it, and I shared it with our state's attorney who watched it and was just absolutely, uh, you know, impressed by the presentation. These two Yale doctors are the preeminent experts in the country. But the, the, the bottom line is this. When we restricted or Congress did trying to market tobacco products to our children, well, those yeah. companies look to, to another avenue to get around right. and vaping was the way they did it. And the, the bottom line is this, uh, Mayor, you know, it started a few years back and they realized the money they were going to make. The advertising was about 10 million a year. And then the day, the date that they did the presentation about a year and a half ago, the marketing by these companies had shot up nationally to over $200 million a year right. because they saw a new cash crop and young people that they could hook on nicotine in a different way. It's obscene and it, it should have been stopped. They didn't go to the extent that they should have. They should have outlawed it. They should have shut it down. Uh, instead, they reduced some of the flavors. It was a very tepid response to a very real problem, which not only is killing youth, but is addicting them to a life of nicotine uh, addiction, which is, as I said, it, it's reprehensible. But again, uh, at least yeah. we in our town saw it. and We're trying to address it as best we can, because I will just candidly say I think that the, that the state and federal government have failed. Yeah, I agree. I guess it's just, it just seems like we go round and round in this stuff. I agree. You know, Sydney, thank you. And I didn't mean to put you on a spot because I was curious. No, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. I'm, I see no further questions. We'll call, please. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Councilor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sfraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item nine, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a real estate purchase contract on behalf of the town of Enfield for two Broadbrook Road. Uh, whereas the town of Enfield owns a property known as two Broadbrook Road. Whereas pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 8-24, the Planning and Zoning Commission at its April 9, 2020 meeting made a favorable recommend recommendation to sell the property. Whereas pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 7-163E, the Town Council held a public hearing on February 8, 2020 regarding the proposed sale of the property and whereas the town listed a property for sale. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Christopher W. Bronson, a town manager or his designee, is authorized to sign the real estate purchase contract on behalf of the Town of Enfield for the sale of two Broadbrook Road to American Rehab LLC. Be a further resolved that Christopher W. Bronson, a town manager, or his designee is authorized to sign all documents included the deed on behalf of the town of Enfield pertaining to the sale of the property to American Rehab LLC subject reviewed by the town attorney on May 21st, 2020 for the Office of Development Services. Development so Community Development. Council so Miller. Second. Second. By Councilor Riley. Uh, Chris, I mean, I mean, Nelson, I know Nelson is good news. I don't know if, uh, yeah, um, yeah, Nelson will be on. This is a proposal that came forward. Uh, I think it's it's wonderful to get it back. He can give you a little quick. It's going to be a, a, a one family home. And uh, I would just like to take this opportunity. I feel I guess Gina um, is right. I feel like chatty Kathy tonight because I, I haven't had a town manager's report and there's so much good news to share. But I would just like to commend the planning and zoning commission because they uh basically when they reviewed this we do 824 referrals they wanted to make sure we had the restrictive covenant which is also on your agenda tonight uh, we have a very collaborative a good relationship with our planning and zoning commission and i would just like to commend them publicly i just like to state most recently their work on the enfield square and the subdivision is going to yield benefits uh there are some very major developments that are going to be occurring there in the next co couple of months thanks to their good work they were uh ready partners and they supported the additional garden plots that we're putting in at the you know next to lamagna and also out at the library they also unanimously the other night approved our enfield express they have been great partners for the town of Enfield. And I'd just like to say that I thank them and this is how government should work. Um, and then if there are questions for you, Nelson, on this, maybe you want to give a little. Yeah, I'll do a quick rundown, Chris. Um, 
property, as many of you know, it's a historic resource in town. Um, the Grange, built in 1850, former schoolhouse community meeting hall. Uh, the buyer, um, American Rehab LLC, has agreed to buy the property. Um, he's signing it as is rider. So he's buying the condition as is. Um, he is not doing any inspections or testing on the property. The uh, buyer is also aware of the declaration of restrictive covenant if the sale goes through. Um, this will be recorded on the land records and the mechanism that we'll have in place is, you know, before the town building department issues a certificate of occupancy on this single family structure, the town's zoning enforcement officer will come in and review all of the improvements to make sure it conforms with the declaration of this restrictive covenant. All that is is basically it's a, it's a document that indicates that the historic um, integrity of the building, the exterior, remains intact. And there's specific conditions in there um, regarding the siding and the windows and the roof and the cupola. Um, you know, so there's, there's conditions regarding the um, the historic integrity of the building. So the, the zoning enforcement officer will review the declaration of restricted covenant uh, before uh, signing off, and then it goes back to the building department, and then they will issue the certificate of occupancy. Thank you, sir. Again, moving on from left to right, Councilor Kiner. No questions. Councilor Sakala. No questions, thank you. Councilor Mangini. I will be abstaining on this in the next um, resolution. I um, am affiliated with Century 21 All Points. While I do not benefit directly from any sale, I just feel that it is, in my opinion, of a conflict, so I will not be voting for this. Thank you. C Councilor Riley. Um, all set. Thanks. Councilor Sparaza. All set. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set. Thank you. Councilor Muller. All set. Thank you. Councilor Ongar. All set. Thank you. Councilor Hemler. No questions. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. Uh, we're moving in the right uh, direction, removing two parcels from our uh, inventory and uh, trying to get everything straightened out and putting them back on the tax rolls. Thank you, sir. Seeing no other, other questions, uh, roll call please, Suzanne. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Councilor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Abstain. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sparazzo. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzanne. Four. Councillor Ongaier. Four. There's 10 in favor, none against, and one abstention. Thank you, Suzanne. Number, item 10, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a declaration of restricted covenants for two Broadbrook Road. Whereas the town of Enfield owns the property at Two Broadbrook Road, and whereas the structure located in this property, which was built in 1850, is considered a significant or historic resource by the town of Enfield, and whereas the purpose of this declaration is to preserve and maintain the exterior features of the building for the on, on the premises predominantly in its original historic condition, whereas no activity shall be undertaken that will alter or adversely affect the appearance, materials, and workmanship of the specified exterior portions of the building indicated in this declaration and whereas these restrictions are to run with the land and shall be binding upon the declarant its successors and assigns and shall ensure to the benefit of the general public and the inhabitants of the, of the town of Enfield and per, 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 perpetuity. Now therefore be it resolved that Christopher W. Bromson, town manager is authorized to sign the declaration of restricted covenants on behalf of the town of Enfield submitted on May 21st, 2020 to the Office of Community Development. So moved. By Councillor Muller. Second. By Councilor Ungar. So Chris, this is just what you basically uh, you know talked about. I don't think there's any other comment. Yes, this is the second part of what Nelson yep. said. This is the restrictive covenant. Councilor Kiner, any questions? No, I don't. Thank you. Councilor Sakala. No questions, thank you. Councilor Mangini. No questions, thank you. Councilor Riley. I'm all set. Council Spraza. No questions. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set, thank you. Councilor Muller. No questions, thank you. 
Councillor Ungar. No questions, thank you. Councillor Hemler. All set, thank you. Councillor Bosco. All set. Suzanne, seeing no further questions, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mancini. Abstain. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Susan. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. There's 10 in favor, none against, one abstention. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item 11, resolution regarding the referral of the plan to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the acceptance of streets construed as part of the, all the River Overlook subdivision. Whereas the Planning and Zoning Commission by vote taken on January 3rd, 2006, approved a subdivision known as River Overlook, Overlook subdivision PH number 2479, Whereas the condition, as a condition of approval, the developer is required to convey to the town the streets known as First Settlers Row, along with related drainage and sewer easements and require open space within said subdivision. Whereas the Director of Public Works confirmed that First Settlers Row complied with town, sta complied with town standards is therefore suitable for acceptance as a town street, whereas pursuant to the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24, acceptance of a town street must be referred to the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission for a report. Now, therefore, be resolved, the Enfield Town Council does hereby refer the proposed acceptance of First Settlers Road to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a re report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut St General Statute 8-24, submitted on June 8, 2020 by our Development Services Office. So moved. Councilor Muller. Second. By Second. Councilor Ungar. <clears throat> Chris, I, I don't know, straightforward. Basically, we're just, you know, I mean, we're, we, it meets the requirements, or so we're submitting uh, again an 824 with planning and zoning. Correct. The uh, director of public works has signed off on both. He's recommended acceptance, and this is a referral, as you said, pursuant to 824, both on River Overlook and River Meadows, too. Thank which you, will be sir. The, the next one. Uh, Councilor Kiner, any questions? No questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councilor Sakala. Don't have any questions. Thanks. Councilor Mangini. I'm good, thank you. Councilor Riley. All set, thanks. Councilor Spraza. All set. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set, thank you. Councilor Muller. No questions, thank you. Councilor Ungar. No questions, thanks. Councilor Hemler. All set, thank you. Councilor Bosco. All set. Seeing no other. Questions, uh, Suzanne, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. <coughs> Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sarraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item 12, resolution regarding referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the acceptance of streets construed as part of the River Meadows 2 subdivision. Whereas the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission by vote taken on February 1, 2007, approved a subdivision known as River Meadows 2 subdivision PH 2526. Whereas as a condition of approval, the developer was required to convey to the town the streets known as River Cliff Lane and Meeting House Lane, along with related drainage and sewer easements and required open space within said subdivision. Whereas the Director of Public Works confirmed that River Cliff Lane and Meeting House Lane comply, complied with town standards and are therefore suitable for acceptance as, a town, as town streets. Whereas pursuant to the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24, acceptance of a town street must be referred to the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission for a report. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council does hereby refer the proposed acceptance of River, River Cliff Lane and Meeting House Lane to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8 24, submitted on June 8, 2020, by the De Office of Development Services. So moved. By Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Riley. Same as the last uh, um, resolution. That is correct. Yep. 
So, Councillor Kiner, left to right. Yes, no questions. Thank you. Councillor Sakala. All set. Thank you. Councillor Mangini. I'm good. Thank you. Councillor Riley. No questions. Councillor Sraza. No questions. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set. Thank you. Councillor Muller. No questions. Thank you. Councillor Ungar. All set. Thank you. Councillor Hamler. No questions. Thank you. Councillor Bosco. All set. Seeing no other questions, Suzanne, roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Hamler. Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sparazzo. Four. Deputy Mayor Susan. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item 13, resolution regarding setting public hearing for the Neighborhood Assistance Act. Whereas the town council of the town of Enfield values the opinion and comments of its constituents. Whereas any elector or taxpayer may have an opportunity to be heard regarding the 2020 Neighborhood Assistance Act proposals. And whereas the town council shall conduct a virtual public hearing Monday, June 6, excuse me, July 20, July 6, 2020 at the time to be determined. Whereas due to the public health emergency, public speaking will be written testimony only and electors or taxpayers may submit written testimony stating name and address to phcomments at enfield.org at by five o'clock p.m. on Monday, June 29, 2020, whereas all public comment received from any elect, Enfield elector or tax, electors or taxpayers, we posted to a link provided to the town's website at least 24 hours prior to the public hearing. Now, therefore, be it resolved in order that the order of business of the Neighborhood Assistant Act hearing be arranged as follows. One, the mayor will recite the gross number of public comments received, memor memorizing the fact that they were received by email in accordance with procedures provided by the Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B, issued March 14, 2020, and Executive Order 7I, issued March 21, 2020. After document received a review of public comment, the record the public hearing will be closed. Date prepared on June 8, 2020, by the town manager's office. So moved. Yeah, Councilor yes. Muller, Council, and second by Council Mangini. Uh, Chris, I don't think there's really any comment unless you have anything. No, this has previously been on. We deferred it um, yeah. given the circumstances. Stances Nelson is on, but uh, I think everybody's well familiar with this. It basically allows these businesses to get a, a state tax credit if they're eligible. And a couple of them have applied and they're anxious to uh, proceed. Got it. Again, left or right, Councillor Kiner, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Councillor Sakala. I'm good. Thank you. Councillor Mangini. I'm good. Thank you. Councillor Riley. All set. Thanks. Councillor Sparaza. No questions. Deputy Mayor Suzak. All set, thank you. Councillor Muller. All set, thank you. Councillor Ungar. All set, thanks. Councillor Hemler. All set, thank you. Councillor Bosco. All set. Suzanne, see no other comments. Roll call, please. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item 14. Resolution authorizing the town manager to extend the agreement with Century 21 All Points Realty. Resolve the Enfield Town Council authorize the town manager to extend the existing agreement with Century 21 All Points Realty for up to two additional years. Prepared by Nelson Teresio, uh, director, uh, Deputy Director of Economic Community Development, uh, submitted on June 10, 2020. So moved. By Councilor Muller. Second. By Councilor Riley. Chris, any comments or? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, this has been reviewed by the town attorney. I have the discretion under the contract that was approved by the council a year ago to re-up for the next two years. But as all of you probably remember, there was a question going back that was raised about 
did uh, enough people have notice? Did we, you know, follow our policies and procedures when we went out to bid? And of course we did. Uh, we went actually above and beyond. It was in the PAR report and it was reported at the council on, on numerous occasions and appropriately advertised. So I did not feel comfortable renewing it without having the council's imprimatur on this. If the council feels that we should go out to bid, then they would not renew and we would go out and we'll essentially do what we did before and we'll try to even uh, extend the scope and breadth of our advertisement to see if others are interested. This is no um, reflection upon the work that Century 21 All Points, who currently has the contract, uh, you know, the work that they have done, they have brought forth contracts and we acted on one this evening. I think they've done a fine job. So I don't want to cast aspersions, but I just did not feel comfortable um, at, you know, because of what had occurred before. I want the council to feel comfortable with it. So if they are comfortable renewing, we can renew. If they'd like to go out to uh, rebid, and we will make uh, extraordinary efforts to make sure local realtors are aware of this, because as you heard, uh, and it, you know, even with our uh, doing our accountants, we go out, we we go through the procedures, and we get one person or one firm to apply. In this instance, when we did it a year ago, we got this local group, which was uh, well recognized, uh, and we got two national groups that were kind of. Um, not within the realm of what we were looking for and didn't really qualify. So I leave it to the council for a discussion. If you're comfortable going forward, fine. If not, we'll go out, re we'll rebid and we'll beat the bushes. Thank you. Uh, we'll be left or right, Councillor Kiner. Chris, I want you to feel comfortable. I'm supporting this. Thank you, sir. Councillor Sakala. I, I mean, here's. I don't know enough to make an opinion either way, to be perfectly honest. I, I mean, are you telling me they're doing a good enough job where we shouldn't go back out? Do you think that maybe we should go back out to see if we can get a better um, rate from another company? I, I mean, I, I don't I don't feel like I have enough information to give an opinion either way. I don't know what they're offering. I don't know if their percentage is lower or higher than what a normal or what somebody else would offer. I don't know if they've done a good enough, you know, a good job according to our standards or anybody's standards. Um, I know I asked for what they were doing for marketing, but obviously I asked for that 45 minutes ago. So I still don't know. Um, I, I just, I don't know that I have an opinion and um, I don't know if there's information that maybe the council should get before we vote. I don't know. Well, that's well, well stated. Nelson is on. He's been uh, working with them. As I said, they've brought some ready, willing, and able buyers forward. And as I said, me bringing this forward is no indication that they're not doing a good job. And again, I, you know, it's the real estate market. It's a different world out there right now. Um, so I perhaps Nelson would like to just opine. I don't want to put him on the spot. Perhaps he doesn't want to say anything. I just felt that because last time questions were raised about did enough people have an opportunity to bid, uh, I wanted to make sure that, as Councillor Kiner said, that we all had a comfort level uh, renewing. It's not really that big a deal to go out and see what other people have to offer. But all of their their commissions and the other uh, you know information that they bid upon was acceptable. It was within the bid uh, parameters. So I, I don't think there was any issue with that. And they have brought some buyers forward. So it's not really about the, the quality uh, of their service. It was more that when we had an opportunity now to say, do we want to go out to bid? Like we did Bloom and Shapiro, as John said, we weren't happy with our previous uh, accounts. So we went out. We have a, the next item and the last item is about our insurance people. They're doing a good job. I just feel I like to keep them honest. I like to go out. I don't like to rest on the laurels of anybody. I don't like to be complacent. So I think the more frequently and more often we go out there and we let people bid in the excuse me the marketplace, I think the town's better off. So that's kind of the situation um, that we're in. Right, and I, I don't know that I disagree with that. Um, and I don't want it to be a, a situation where I'm trying to say that they haven't done their job. I mean, there's nothing preventing us from picking them if we go out to bid again, right? Oh, absolutely not. I think they, you know, given the fact that they've delivered, I think that we would recognize them as a very uh, viable right. Uh, candidate. Right. I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's the way we go. I, I don't know. I feel like I need, I, I need somebody to. I'm not. I'm not me. uncomfortable. We have we have the listings out there, counselor, and I'm not uncomfortable. 
And if you want my um, gut feeling, I'd feel more comfortable a- after what's transpired. I think we should just go out to bid and we'll go on. We'll, like I said, we'll go above and beyond the call and let the best man win or woman um, or group. And I, I feel that it's been a year. I think, you know, given that there was a question about how many people knew about it, I think we should just go out there and really advertise the heck out of it and see what happens. That's my, my gut feeling. I mean, that, that's fine. I'm willing to take your recommendation. Thanks, guys. Councilor Mangini. Okay. I can only comment on the fact that, again, I am um, affiliated with Century 21 All Points, so I will not be supporting this arrangement. I will be abstaining. Thank you. Councilor Riley. Um, I, I don't really have any comments or questions. I, I think I'm okay for now. Councilor Spraza. You know, I think um, it's important to point out that this company was selected according to our town charter the first time, and they've done a good job. However, I don't think it would be unwise to go out to bid again and just to see if we could get a better deal somewhere. Uh, but I think it's important to point out it's not because they're not doing a good job or that they were selected according to our charter, like the manager said. So I'd be in favor of going out again, though. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak. You know, I, I, I don't know. I'd like to listen to what Nelson has to say, but I also would like to, I mean, maybe ask this question. Um, we have a billing um, um, organization that does the billing for water pollution control, and their contract is co- consistently renewed without us even looking at it nor any consideration of going out to bid. I didn't believe that was a lifetime contract. So I find it very odd that we're scrutinizing the extension on this one when we did not scrutinize the extension on the water pollution control billing. Thank you. Well, I uh, usually respect uh, all of the comments that Councillor Susak makes. I think that um, comment, though, is completely <clears throat> irrelevant to this. It, 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 to say that we shouldn't look at one because for a reason or other, we haven't looked at another. I, we've looked at EMS billing and gone out to bid. And if they, it, it with the, some of these are very unique with EMS, there are very few people who are uh, authorized by Medicare and the federal government to do the billing. So we have very limited options. I will look at that immediately tomorrow. And John Wilcox is on the call, but I, I take umbrage with the fact that you would compare one to the other. This was an issue. And um, I would, I would think that given the fact that Certain questions were raised at the time that the discretion that Cindy Mangini has shown in, in uh, at, you know, at basically recusing herself would have been a better course of action on this. We will look at it, but I, um, I do not appreciate the comment. Uh, this is Nelson Terezo here. I'll just add in uh, my, you know, my experience working with Century 21 since, since they've been on board of the town. Um, when the town went through the RFP, RFQ, uh, RFQ process to select them, as Chris previously mentioned, we you know dotted, dotted our I's and crossed our T's. We marketed it. We received three responses. One was from a auctioning company out of Florida. The other firm was out of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and it was Century 21. For the properties that we have on the market or are currently marketing uh, for residential, local market, we're not we're not marketing uh, commercial development. Um, I feel that they were the most qualified. They provided the best rates or or. Com- equally competitive to the other ones. It was 3% commission on their, on uh, the sale of the property. Uh, but in, in general, um, they've been uh, very good to work with. Uh, and I mean, I don't think, I'm, in my opinion, in terms of the local market, uh, nobody knows the local residential market, probably better than them in the area. But again, we can go out and rebid everything if the council feels that's um, the appropriate thing to do. Well, I'm going to just uh, segue in here because I am not going to sign the renewal. It's my discretion. I wanted to get the input from the council, but I feel now strongly, whereas I did not uh, previously, I will not sign it. We are going out to rebid. And with that, Mayor, you can 
uh, you know, solicit questions from other councils, but I will not sign it. We are going to go out and we're going to hear what the market has to offer. Deputy Mayor Suzak, you still have the floor. I'm all set. Councilor Muller. Uh, I'm comfortable with going back out as well. I, I, either way, renewing it as well. We followed all the rules, but if everyone's more comfortable going out, we could go out again and get a better rate. Councilor Angar. I'm comfortable with going out as well. Thanks. Councilor Hamler. Um, since all points has already started the work, I would think that, you know, we'd want to continue with them, but I could go either way. I mean, it, it's fine to, to rebid. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. Well, I guess I don't know why I'm sitting here. You know, the decision's already made. Um, Chris, this time I have to disagree with you. I usually agree with you 100%, but this time, you know, I, I hate to see when something turns political. You know, we are playing with people's real lives, real money. Uh, I know multiple real estate agents that knew about this bid when it came out. And for someone to lose a contract, that they get, they can bid on it again. Only because it turned political, I think, is wrong. So, I mean, if it's not go, if it's going out to bid anyway, and it has to come to a vote, I will be supporting it because I don't think it's fair when someone's doing a good job uh, to have something political. And this is purely political to take money, take business and, and shut someone off because of political problems that started before. It's not right. It's not fair. And that's it. But I'm one vote. And I will be a vote to support this because it's not right to do this. I mean, you have up to two years. I would maybe say go one. But they're just starting to move things. We we they're selling property. I mean, no, you know, the, the everyone does the same thing. They go on the MLS, and you know, in all fairness, to everyone, anyone that cares about their own business should look at bids. So uh, I will be supporting it. And again, and my my vote is probably for nothing right now. But I don't think it's fair, and I don't think it's right. Thank you. Thank you. So Suzanne. It if it's if it's going out to bid, then should the resolution be re, we shouldn't? I mean, I want to make sure from a procedural standpoint. I'm really not sure. I mean, if you're not if you're not going to if you're going to take it out to bid, why vote on the resolution? Right. But that's your call. Well, no, what I would say, Mr. Mayor, let people stand by their. Um, standards and why don't you vote on it and if if the overwhelming majority is you want to go out to you don't want to go out to bid you want me to renew it i will i'm just saying i i was comfortable with the consensus until certain remarks were made that and i again will disagree with mr bosco uh, politics does not enter into any of the decisions that i make but when we have to be um, understanding of what uh, claims were made and, and, and various things then to sort of re-emerge uh, them tonight made me very uncomfortable doing it. And that's why I brought it forward. But I, I would rather have the council vote on the amendment and you make the decision instead of me, uh, you know, lording over. And uh, even though I have the legal authority and perhaps, you know, I, I don't think we have to ask the town attorney his opinion. Uh, they've already told me I have the authority to do it, but I'm comfortable with going with the council's vote on it. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yes, uh, Chris. I don't mean you're playing political, but it's just not. It, the, the bid is there, and, it, and it, it's a renewable contract. And I just get upset when you said you are not signing it. Uh, there's 11 of us here, and I feel that you know if that's the case, then why are we sitting here? So I, I feel comfortable going to a bid and then or going to vote and losing, uh, or or Make it go either way, but I think that's the only fair way. At least 11 people get to say something. I agree, Joe. And even though, as I said previously, I had the legal authority to do it, I felt on this one I would bring it forward to you. I, I don't often abdicate my responsibility, but I just thought, given the sensitivity, but you're right. I, that's why I've withdrawn, and I will say let, let it be the will of the council to decide. 
uh, and I will abide by that. Mike. Yeah. Anyone get their hand up? Yeah, me. Okay. So, go ahead. Thanks. So, Joey, who's who's being political? That has nothing to do with any of us. None of us had anything to do with it. So I don't know who you're talking about, but I resent that as well. That's it. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Hearing none, uh, Suzanne, I guess roll call. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Against. Councillor Hemler. Four. Councillor Kiner. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Abstain. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Against. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Could you review what we're actually voting on? Is it the uh, as it appears in our agenda? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it hasn't been amended. Okay. Four. Councilor Ongeyer. Four. We have eight in favor, two against, and one abstention. Moving on to item 16, the insurance renewal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, hey, sir. Much like we've been talking about, this is something that we um, have in place. We had a situation that occurred, much like with our accountants, that we weren't completely happy. Uh, we have current insurance with the travelers, and they've done uh, – pretty much an outstanding job. But again, uh, given the cost of the insurance renewal, they do all of our workman's compensation, our liability and our uh, property and casualty. We thought it would be healthy. There are only a couple of players in the market in Connecticut uh, that do this kind of insurance for, for cities and towns. Uh, one is the travelers. There are some couple of uh, smaller players and the next larger uh, insurer is Kerma. It's the Connecticut Interlocal Risk Management Association. We were a founding member and had been with them for probably, oh goodness, 30, 40 years until a couple of years ago. And then we went out to bid and we went with the travelers. Um, our staff is very happy with the travelers, but again, I thought it would be important to go out. And uh, it's really not a full bid. It was a proposal by both of them. So again, even though it's my discretion to make the decision with John and Steve Belinda, uh, given the magnitude of it, I wanted council to be able to have the benefit of both of these companies making a presentation. Uh, the dollars probably are going to be kind of close and what they offer is similar. But I thought, it, as I said earlier, and I'm sorry, I got a little hot, but I like to go out and keep everybody honest. And so we would like to have them do a presentation um, a week from hence, uh, June 22nd on Monday and let them both do a presentation, let council give me some guidance as to uh, what they think in their wisdom, which direction we should go. It's a big thing to switch carriers. It's a lot of work for our staff and it, it causes, you know, in submission of claims and procedure and online, it's a big decision to make. So again, I'm not abdicating the responsibility, but when you're paying a few million dollars a year uh, in premium costs, which is one of our largest expenses in the budget, I wanted to have council to be able to give me their opinion. So that will be for next Monday night if everybody uh, believes we can. So, meet. so the request is that we're going to have a special meeting next Monday, five o'clock. Um, Correct. Discuss the presentation from insurance. You know, again, I'll go left or right. Bill, any comments or questions? Uh, Scar, excuse me, Councillor Kiner. I apologize. No questions. Maybe what I could do, Mayor, is just uh, maybe uh, just to let you know as well, there were a couple of uh, requests or, or transfers that John Wilcox needed that are COVID related that we would put on. They're, they're um, significant, but rather smaller. And then one other item I would like, and I think it's very important um, during the budget process, I had to cut with a uh, basically with an axe most all of the CIP requests. 
however worthy from all of our directors to uh, recognize the pandemic and to keep a, a, you know, our tax rate at a zero or our mill rate at zero with no tax increase. But one of the uh, submissions by Chief Fox that we've been working on uh, for oh, over the past year with IT uh, was body cams, in-car cameras, and the uh, uh, addition to our um, neighborhood camera systems that have been highly effective in crime stopping. So we had to, despite the fact they were worthy, I had to remove them. I think given current events, it would be important for the council to reconsider them. John Wilcox, we're going to have to take it from our unallocated fund balance because we don't have that kind of money sitting around. But I think it is very imperative for the safety of our citizens and our residents uh, and our police to be able to have these capabilities. Um, we had tested many systems over the last year. We do have a recommendation. I would like the chief and, and, and Paul to be able to make a presentation. I think it, it would be appropriate to invest that money now. As I said, given current events, not only nationally, but locally. And I think it would protect everybody involved to have a video. It's not the end all say all. It can still be subject to interpretation. But I think the fact that we did, we made efforts long before the current um, situation that we're in to have that available, I'd like the council to be able to consider it um, at that same meeting. Okay. Uh, so, again, since an item agenda, Bill, uh, Councilor Tyner, Scott, excuse me, any questions or comments? Councillor Sakala. Um, I'm fine with the presentation. I'll just let you know I'm not available Monday. But, you know, advanced, more advanced notice in a week would be great. No, and I think th that's point is well taken. We could do it Wednesday. Those special meetings have been appropriate. I just wanted to do it sooner than later. So we can work with, um, if, if both groups talk to their um, caucuses, then Monday's not... Um, etched in stone yep. Wednesday would be fine too. I think it's important that everybody be available. Okay. Is, is Wednesday okay? Counselor Sakal. Nope. <laughs> I, it, it, I'll have to check. I don't think so. Um, depending on what time we do it, if we're going to do it right at five o'clock, then maybe next Wednesday. But again, I'm, I'm one of 11. So. Okay. Thank you. Even though I am very important, I'm only one of 11. That is true. That is true. Councilor Mangini. Thank you. Uh, kudos to you, uh, Mr. Bromson. You and I were in the same rowboat, paddling in the same direction on Kerma. And um, I, th I think it's, it's wise to bring both groups forward to council in a special session uh, to uh, better evaluate the insurance. Thank you for going that road. Um, also on the police equipment, Yes, most definitely we do need to allocate whatever our chief is um, requiring. Um, you know, I'm always a supporter of our PD and the needs that they have. So again, thank you for, um, you know, being a very, um, you know, thinking out of the box, if you will. Um, and a, again, a special meeting is definitely in order. So I, I definitely support that. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Cindy. Councilor Riley. Um, no questions. I'm looking forward to both presentations because both of those things are big ticket items and deal with important things. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Councilor Sparraza. I uh, think it's a great idea to have both companies come in. Obviously, we want to get the best economic benefit from this, but at the same time, it's a big decision when you switch from one for our employees. You know, they have certain doctors, you switch a carrier. It, it's not something to be taken lightly. So I look forward to both of the uh, presentations. And uh, Mr. Bromson, my question also for the, the body cams and uh, the in-car cameras. Um, I know that one of the issues in the past was that those body cams and, and videos that are taken are uh, considered uh, FOIable. <clears throat> And I'd like to hear the plan the chief has next week when people come in, what kind of staffing requirements is that gonna take when someone wants a video from two weeks ago? They're not readily, they're not just like in a, a file cabinet 
And I know that Sergeant Marino uh, for many years took care of that for our DWI. Um, but now I think we're going to increase that demand with all these um, FOI requests with the cam cameras. And I'm just wondering what the, what the chief's thoughts are on that. Thank you, Chief. I, we have talked about that. That has always been a, uh, a looming consideration with the implementation. Chief and I was public safety director. That was our only hesitancy in the implementation was the uh, how would we store it and how would we access it and the manpower to do so. And I think that things have changed with the cloud and other uh, IT improvements, but it certainly is going to be uh, an increased burden, but they will have a plan in place. And I think this is something that it's time has come. The state and probably the federal government are going to be mandating it. So I think it's one of those in, in large respects, you know, part of it is going to be an unfunded mandate, but we will get their best estimates on how we will deal with it in the short term. But I appreciate the question. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, <clears throat> excuse me, Deputy Mayor Suzak. I'm all set. Thank you. Councilor Muller. I'm looking forward to presentations as well, especially the body cams and car cams as well. Thank you. Councilor Ungar. Uh, I'm not sure my availability for next week, but I will try my best. Councilor Hamler. Um, I'm available either day, so, uh, and I would look forward to all the presentations. Thank you. Councilor Bosco. I'm all set. And, and just to clarify something, Councilor Sraza said, Chris, this is not about the health insurance. This is our overall be a liability insurance carrier. Correct. This actually right. is not our health insurance. Right. We are self-insured. That is separate. Yeah. And we have a third-party administrator, Cigna. This is just specifically for our workman's compensation. Right. I just want to make sure and right. for, that's clear. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And I, I will tell you that it, it will be a very interesting presentation because um, we have really worked very hard in safety to improve our outlook and uh, you know our uh, ability to attract uh, these insurers to want to insure the town of Anfield because we've been very proactive in both workman's compensation and in our, uh, you know, property and liability. So I think that that posture puts us in a good position. I just like to say as a preview, we can't go wrong. Both are incredible companies. And I think because of the hard work staff has done over the last few years that we were in a really good position to get a good product at a very, very good price. Yeah, okay, I agree. I think uh, next Monday works for most. And also, Chris, could we maybe by next Monday also maybe have just an idea of what we spend per capita and on social services in town and what, you know, what kind of compared to other, our other like communities as well? Yes, I can ask Cindy Guerrero. Yeah. Um, she's been doing a top to bottom review. And I know in past budgets, we kind of broke that out, different comparisons, yeah. uh, and we can have that information available. Very good. Thank you, sir. Any other questions on... Seeing none, I just want, before we adjourn, just want, I think we all want to wish our graduates the very best, our high school graduate at High, the very best of luck. We congratulate them in a very difficult year and we wish them nothing but the best. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. By Second. Council Mullen, by Council Mangini, all them fair say aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Thank you and have a good night. Good night. Thank you. All right. Congratulations.